loved one's service wouldn't mean as much because their brothers would not have risked their own lives um, to get their aviator back. So I think for them, it, it, it's all about this, um, this sort of alternate family that these guys had over in Vietnam, how much they cared about each other, how no one wanted to be the last guy to, to die in Vietnam. And they were really willing to, to do anything to, to avoid a brother uh, experiencing that fate. Yeah, and I'd like to ask about that thing you mentioned uh, and telescope out and look at the broader issue of the Vietnam War and how it's remembered today. How you said that for those fighting it, there wasn't the sense of defending your country and Western civilization like World War II was because people don't get fired up about communist containment in the same way. You're really just fighting for the person beside you. From what you've seen, do you think there will ever be a revisionist take on the Vietnam War? Because now as it stands, in the self-mythologizing of especially the baby boomer generation and movies like Forrest Gump, the pride is the protest against the war and speaking truth to power against this war that was supported on a number of different lies from politicians. But do you think that there will be a revisionist take that might look more at what you described there of fighting for the man beside you? Or is the current take justified? What do you think? I think the current take on sort of the, the strategy coming out of the White House and, um, you know, how the, how the war was conceived and fought, I don't think that deserves to change. I think, you know, many of us agree that the, 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 the war was a mistake. Um, and I, I don't see any new evidence, anything coming out of the archives that's really going to change that. Um, I do think that, I do hope that two things happen. First, I'd like to see more um, sort of on the Vietnamese side of the conflict. Um, so many soldiers and civilians died in that war that we still don't really have a conception of. I, I think, um, you know, there are, it, it's very difficult to sort of humanize your enemy um, immediately after a war, but um, I think the suffering of the Vietnamese people should be taken into account when we sort of enlarge our conception of, of the war because, okay, it was a political mistake. Um, but this enormous sort of damage that it did in the lives of Americans and South Vietnamese, um, I think really needs to filter into our understanding a little more. Um, and the second thing, like you said, a lot of these guys went over there. Um, some of the people that I interviewed said that their loved ones were having doubts about the war itself. Um, Bruce Walker, who's one of the last guys to be shot down and actually spent uh, a bunch of days on the ground evading the Viet Cong almost went AWOL to Hawaii. I, I'm sorry, to Canada uh, when he, when he was on R and R. Um, but he was drawn back, not because he believed in the war, but be, because he believed in his fellow airmen and he wouldn't leave them to fight a war that he wouldn't fight. So I think it's easier, honestly, to, to give yourself wholly to a war that has complete support and has this, this, moral banner like World War II does, it's much more difficult to go fight in a war when you know that it's not going to be another sort of D-Day situation. You're not going to be lionized. And you have to do these, these, uh, these self-sacrificing things almost against the grain. So I hope people come to realize that, um, you know, the airmen over there, uh, the soldiers we're making the sacrifice in full knowledge that they were not going to be sort of received home as heroes. And that, that takes an extra measure, I think, of uh, of dignity and self-sacrifice. Yeah, thanks for digging into this, that history is definitely not morality stories where everything is black and white, but there are all these shades of gray, too. But the story itself, which you described, I think really speaks volumes about the bravery of those involved. So, Stephen, thank you for joining us, and we'll have to have you on for next projects. I understand you're uh, deep in a follow-up project. I don't know if you're at liberty to discuss. Is it also on the Vietnam War, or is it another topic? No, it's actually half World War II and half after. It's it's about the Holocaust and um, so sort of the repercussions, but hopefully a, a fresh angle on you know something that's been written about um, endlessly. Uh, but it's just a, another sort of great narrative that takes us through the um, – uh, hopefully the core of, of a story we think we know. We'll have to have you on to discuss it. So, Stephen, thank you for joining us. It was great to be here. Thanks. All right. Well, that was the episode for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. First of all, I'd like to thank the Knowlton's Rangers, and especially our spy masters, Baron Fraser, Carl from Norway, 
Chris Romaine, and Melissa Sarnowski. And I'll explain what that means in a second. If you want to support the show and help me keep producing this content, there are four easy ways for you to do it. One, subscribe to the show and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. If you want to do that, you can go to historyunpluggedpodcast.com and there you'll find instructions. Two, join our Facebook group, which you can find if you just search for History Unplugged. And please like and share posts that I put up about new episodes. Three, submit a question to me so that I can answer it on air. You can email me at info at historyonthenet.com or leave a voicemail. And again, go to historyunpluggedpodcast.com and you'll find instructions. Lastly, and I think this one is the best, is to become one of the Knowlton's Rangers. The Knowlton's Rangers were an elite reconnaissance and espionage detachment of the Continental Army in the Revolutionary War, but it's also the name of the History Unplugged membership program. Learn how to join by going to patreon.com slash unplugged. So here's what you get if you become one of the Knowlton's Rangers. If you join at the level of Scout, you can get early access to new podcast episodes, along with enjoying absolutely every single episode of the History Unplugged podcast ad-free all 270 and counting episodes. If you join at the level of intelligence officer, you can also get access to premium episodes, like a multi-part series on the life of Audie Murphy, the most decorated combat soldier in World War II, or the 10-part series Ottoman Lives, a series that looks at the cast of characters that made up the Ottoman Empire, such as the Sultan, the eunuch, the harem servant girl, and the soldier. And finally, if you join at the level of spymaster, you get all the same stuff as the scouts and intelligence officers, but you also get a shout out to you and or your business at the end of each episode, a three pack of hardcover history books, plus you will be put at the very front of the line for me to answer your question about history, and I can guarantee I will dedicate an episode that's about an hour long or so to your question. Sign up at patreon.com slash unplugged. Again, that's patreon.com slash unplugged. Anyway, those are the ways you can help out the show. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for listening to the History Unplugged podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get your daily dose of all things history related from ancient Greece to the Cold War. We'll see you next time at the History Unplugged podcast.